Hello, I thought this time round we'd take a look at the Nasdaq. Um, given a lot of talk about an upcoming US recession, the inverted yield curve, all of that sort of stuff, and some people wondering what well, does this mean that stock markets are going to crash or at least go into another bear market from here. So I thought, oh, let's do an update looking at this and look to get a trade on, and then on the NASDAQ as well. Just to remind ourselves where we've been, if a quick 20 second look at the charts. So we saw the NASDAQ 100 peak in November 2021. We had that, that run after uh, the initial shock from the COVID situation uh, at the beginning of 2020. They made a great recovery from stocks. Then we saw after that peak in November 2021, we saw the sell off into October 2022 as markets under pressure for much of last year. And then since then, we've had uh, this market and plenty of other stock markets trying to build a recovery, although this month has been a little bit boring, uh, fairly sideways this month, apart from a, big, a bigger sell off earlier this week on Tuesday. So I thought, um, let's take a look at the NASDAQ in a bit more detail. As usual, I go through some of the recent news, then we'll jump onto the charts and take a look in a bit more depth. And I am going to place a trade. So, so for me, I do think there's an opportunity here, but we'll talk about that when we get into the charts. Um, a quick mention for a couple of things I do. Um, I run a newsletter that uh, comes out over the weekend, every weekend, only goes out once a week. So I don't spam you, uh, free of charge. If you go to my website, davidjonestrading.co.uk, I'll put the link in the description. You can sign up uh, for the website there. If you go to the homepage and scroll down uh, a bit, you'll see a box uh, to sign up, put your email in there and you'll get that every week. Uh, it's a look, it's a catch up, what's going on in markets? Uh, what am I trading? What am I looking at in the week ahead? And a trading tip in there as well. So if you're signed up, you'll get that um, every weekend. And also, of course, I do run a trading course. I've been running it for a few years now, medium term and shorter term trading. Uh, there have been some great five star reviews on Trustpilot from those who have been on the course. I'm very grateful uh, for those. And if you want to join one of the courses, one of the three course packages before the end of this month, if you use the code APRIL20, which I'll also put in the description of this video, uh, you get a 20% discount off the courses. Uh, that's it. Any questions, you can contact me uh, direct through the website. Okay, let's um, get into it and take a look at the NASDAQ in a bit more detail. So we've had, we, ha we are in a busy time for stock markets with plenty of companies' earnings out. We've got, I think, uh, Meta and Amazon later this week. And perhaps stock markets are a little bit nervous uh, about what these earnings are going to look for. Yesterday, we did see on Tuesday this week, we saw the NASDAQ hit the lowest for the month so far. So we saw a pretty volatile day for stock markets uh, on Tuesday. But it's, it's against the backdrop of what has been a fairly flat and boring month uh, in April. But let's talk about this, um, the concerns about a US recession. So I've seen lots of talk, uh, people worried about the prospect for a US recession. Um, and one of the things driving this is this inverted yield curve, which is often cited as a great predictor of recessions. And it's the difference between the yield of longer term treasuries and shorter term treasuries. Typically, longer term treasuries, let's say a 10 year treasury, uh, has a better yield, a higher yield, than a shorter term treasury due to people wanting to be rewarded more for future uncertainty. But this has swapped uh, since the middle of last year. So we have uh, this inverted US yield curve. And in the past, this has been a good predictor of recessions. It's its most extreme, I think at the moment, since 1981. But there are plenty of people, there's a, there's a good note out there from Goldman Sachs. If you Google Goldman Sachs, an inverted treasury yield, you can yield it. And they're saying that perhaps, you know, it's not going to be the same this time around. And it has been you know, in this position since the middle of last year. And stock markets you know, do not seem to me, at least, overly worried about the prospect of recession. We'll find out a bit more later this week when we get the latest US GDP numbers. How's the US economy doing? And again, these are expected uh, to show growth. So, so at the moment, I don't think we're in a situation where stock markets going to fall off a cliff if the US did go into recession. And let's look at you know, where we are from an economic point of view. We have big worries, of course, about the state of inflation. I think we've still got probably a couple more interest rate rises to come from the US central bank. But inflation in the US has fallen back to 5%. That's the lowest it's been 
since May 2021. So we're almost back to where we were two years ago for US inflation. So I think we are past the peak uh, of inflation. You know, it, there's a great saying that stock markets climb a wall of worry. There's always something to worry about. But I think if we worried about every little thing, we'd probably never buy a stock. So for me, um, I think any concerns about stagnation in the economy are being priced in to stock markets. And let's not forget, if we look back at what the Nasdaq has done, you know, we did see a fall of more than a third in the Nasdaq from where it peaked in October 2021 to the lows uh, the following year in October 2022. So we did see a massive slide. We're still well off those previous all time highs. Um, anyway, as usual, enough chat about it. Let's get in. Let's take a look at the charts and the trends in a bit more detail and see where the trade an opportunity for a trade could be. And I do place a trade in this. So let's jump on and have a look. OK, let's uh, let's take a look at this Nasdaq. Before I do that, the first video I did on the channel this year, let me show you. If you go to videos and scroll all the way down, it was the Nasdaq um, back in the beginning of January. And I said, is, is it set to be the comeback king for 2023? And, and back then, the Nasdaq was trading around 11,000. So it would have been back here somewhere. And, and the market is up, you know, 15, 16 percent for the year so far. You know, so 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 far, at least that bullish outlook has turned out. And I'm still the same. I still think the same. I think there's there's more to come from uh, US stock markets in 2023. But but let's go back and look at some of the recent history. So we had we had that peak in November 2021. If we pick up on the trend since then. So that trend looks something like that. And we had it finally break out of that trend in late January of this year. So we had the base formed from October through to December. Uh, and then we've seen the market break out and break some bigger levels on the way up. We still haven't taken out the highs from August of last year. And they're in around 13,700. So if I was looking for a next intermediate target, that would be my target. Um, let's just pick up on, on the trend that we've been in this year. So that looks something like that for me. We've had a fairly boring April um, of just sideways movement. That was the, the big-ish sell-off that we had on Tuesday of this week. But it doesn't really change that overall trend. You know, We've got lots of pockets of interim support. First of all, down around 12,500, the lows from the end of March. Then another level down at 12,400 from the third week of March, the big level for me is uh, is this one here from the middle of March. That comes in uh, just the other side of 11,700. So there are lots of support levels if this market does sell off more aggressively from here. And there's definitely scope for further weakness. But, you know, in the great scheme of things, that trend for this year is still very much intact. So I'd still be quite happy to be a buyer of the dip. And that's what I'm going to do in a second. Looking at the RSI down here, I mean, it, it is... It's been falling, obviously, because the market has been selling off. We're not in oversold. The last time the RSI was oversold, this is a 10-day RSI. We've got to go back to the end of December of last year. So we've not had an oversold RSI this year, which shows perhaps, I think, the strength in this market. Um, but it has dipped down to its lowest for about five or six weeks or so. Uh, so again, the market's been unwinding perhaps some of its overboughtness but I'd still be a buyer of the dip. And, and that's what I'm going to do. So let's let's set that trade up. So I've switched over to the trading platform um, to find out who I trade with. Um, just go to my website. Let me bring it up now. And that's davidjonestrading.co.uk. If you go to the performance section, you can see a bit more about my trading performance um, last year and into this year. As part of the short term course, you can see details on that in there as well. And you can use that voucher, that April 20 voucher, if you'd like to uh, join any of the courses. But if you go to the broker page up here, I've done a short video, about a 10 minute video on um, why I trade with this broker, you know, what's important for me in a broker. So if you go and watch that video, I explain it there. And you can click on go to the broker to try them out for yourself. But let's, uh, let's set up this. Um, that's that trade. I've got a couple of trades at the moment. I think these are from the live stream that I held last Friday. So there's a trade, a Euro Aussie trade at the moment that's uh, in profit. That's done okay. There's the Tesla trade. I was buying the gap down that's under 
underwater slightly at the moment, but overall the trades are up. So a great example there. You don't need to be right all the time to make money. You know, the idea is when we're right, we make more than we lose when we're wrong. And at the moment that is playing out in those two trades. But let's um let's get the Nasdaq trade on. So the trend looks something like this. Um, I accept there might be a bit more weakness in the short term, but I'm going to want to buy into this trend overall. So it's more of a medium term trade for me. So I'm going to put my stop loss the other side of these lows here. So the lows from the 20th of March came in at what 12.396. I'm going to go 12.3 for a stop. Let's set that trade up. So I bring the order ticket in. I'm going to trade the smallest I can. I can trade half a contract here. Put a stop loss in at uh, 12. 300. Uh, so my risk on the trade, if I get stopped out, is uh, $266 for me. Uh, that's fine. Let's um, let's send that trade through and put it on. There we go. So I've bought. So I'm in at 12.832. I've got my stop in at 12.3. You can see that trade down there, US Tech 100 CFD in with all the other trades. Let's see how that works out. Let's um, Let's jump back onto the platform, onto the charts. So that's the trade I'm in now. If the market trades down to here, I'll be stopped out. But I think there's a reasonable chance that perhaps we'll see some confidence come back in, some bias of the dips, you know, and even if it does start to break below 12.3, I'd still be looking for a buying opportunity. You've got this big level down here, uh, the mid-March lows down at below 11.7. I think it's only if it starts to break below there, does it look like this year's recovery is really in trouble. So as I say, when it comes to targets, my first target is going to be for a run back up to these summer 22 highs uh, around about 13.7. So about a thousand points higher from where we are now. And I, you know, I do expect if we do get that high, we will see a bit more back and forth, perhaps a bit more volatility. But let's see how it turns out. But for me, you know, in a nutshell at the moment, the trend for this year is still up. I've got some logical areas to look at placing stops. So despite all the talk of recession, you know, we are seeing this market hold up reasonably well. Let's see how the trade works out. That's it for this update and um, we'll see how it does. We'll do an update. I'll do the live stream this Friday. We'll take a look at how that trade's doing. It's a fairly wide stop. Give the market a bit of room to mess around. Um, don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. Go to the website davidjonestrading.co.uk. I'll put the link in the description down below to sign up for the, one of the training courses. Uh, if you use the code APRIL20, there's a 20% discount on that before the end of the month. And if you have any questions, you can get in touch with me. Um, but for now, We'll leave things there. Uh, so until the next time, good luck with your trading.